Should be that. And recording now. Recorded live on DementiaRadio.org, it's the Funny Music Podcast. Brought to you by TheFunk.com, where you can download new free comedy songs twice a week. Now, here's your hosts, Devo Spice and the great Luke Ski. Hey, Devo Spice. Hey, Luke Ski. We have songs by TV's Kyle, I know, is one of them. We do, and the other song is by Lauren Mayer, and Yay. neither of them are here tonight. Um, we have a pre-recorded interview with Lauren Mayer coming up later in the show, and we have a last-minute pre-recorded thing with TV's Kyle coming up earlier in the show because he forgot about this thing. So, uh, <laughs> And he's cooking dinner right now. So welcome to episode 519 of the Funny Music Podcast. Let's get caught up with what Devo and Luke have been up to since last week. Or else, Devo, if Luke failed and didn't show up. Hey, what? Oh, he's oh, right. Boy. So, Luke, what you been up to? Well, um, I went out and did a my, my big monthly shopping thing um, where I go to Costco and then usually at least one other store to try to load up on all of the food and supplies I need for the month so I don't have to keep running out and doing a bunch of little trips because that's not good uh, self-quarantining. So so that was kind of a big, long day. Um, and uh, I ended up in uh, a department store, and it's been a long time since I've gone through any of the you know, toy action figure aisles and such, and I went down some, and I was just kind of blown away because there was stuff there that I had no idea existed. So I... Um, I initially grabbed some stuff thinking, well, I'll, I'll figure out later what I'm going to get and not get, but for now I'm just going to keep moving. And then by the time I got to the end of my journey inside the store, I was like, okay, screw it. I'm just going to leave and get all this stuff because I, I don't have time to think anymore because I had grabbed a bunch of, you know, like ice cream and frozen things. It's like I got to get home. So so it was really cool to see that they put out a um, Transformers. Uh, Hasbro put out a, uh, a, a reissue of the original Astro Train. Uh, triple Changer, who, if, for those of you who don't know, transforms from a robot into a space shuttle into a steam engine, which I never actually owned an Astro Train that I bought firsthand. I got one from a friend secondhand, and uh, it was already beat up when I got it, and it's still beat up to this day. So it made me happy to be able to own my own Astro Train. <laughs> um, and uh, so one aspect of these classic reissues that I always forget until I open the package is that back in the day, they used to come with stickers that you had to put on the robot yourself. And then every time I open it, it's like, oh, yeah, stickers. I have to do that now. And the, the, the little silver foil stickers, it's like getting them to peel off. It's like it's so friggin' thin. It was like such a pain. <laughs> to get them, get so them I, up, I, I happen to have Astro Train as one of my Transformers from when I was a kid. This is the cool, original cool. Gen 1 Astro Train. Uh, it was yeah, on yeah I have, right I have one there. of those. <laughs> I have one of those too, but uh, but like yours, it's uh, well, it, it doesn't have any of the stickers on it, and no. and it's also thoroughly beat up, and one of its arms is missing. So, <laughs> well, so I have a couple of those too. I never yeah. never did put the stickers on most of them. I'm not sure why. I, I just I felt like keeping the sticker sheet intact, and then I lost them. So, <laughs> I had uh, a girlfriend in I believe it was junior high school, uh, who broke up with me because uh, one day. Uh, in my comings and goings around the Lake Geneva in the summer, was, you know, before I could drive, you know, junior high school age. So I, I had gone to Walmart and I picked up some new transformer that had just come out and I went to the YMCA because I think that's where I was going to be meeting up with my rest of my family later to get a ride home. So I got my transformer out and I was like putting the stickers on the robot and stuff. And then later she broke up with me because, you know, friends of hers had seen me opening the toy and putting the stickers on it. And, you know, that was such a horrible thing for me to have done to embarrass her in public like that so she dumped me so <laughs> you're better off without her <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um so that was neat um oh another neat aspect about that trip uh another reason i made that uh, or okay starting again the very last thing i bought at the one department store was um uh a webcam and i was looking at webcams in their glass case and i was going to buy one of those and then when i 
got it when they got it out of the case and showed it to me it turned out to be one of those like home security cams and not a regular webcam yeah. <laughs> like oh okay well i guess i won't be getting this then and they said she's like oh so you just want like a regular web ca- webcam i'm like yeah sure she's like oh wait i think i have one over here and then she looked over in another area and it was all gps things for cars and it what that wasn't the right thing either and then she's like wait i think we have one behind the thing in the case so she unlocks the like cage case in the you know behind the counter and pulls out a webcam that's in a box that's obviously all beat up and has been opened at least once and taped back together. And so I asked her, oh, uh, is there any way I can get a discount on this? It's obviously like a return and it's all beat up. And she's like, no, it's not a return. It was just, you know, in our boxes that way. And it, it kind of got messed up and, you know, but the, the camera still works perfectly. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I bought it. I even got the extra $7 uh, uh technological warranty extra coverage whatever it's called uh so it ended up being after tax like 78 dollars. and when i got home and opened the box the following day the box was literally filled with garbage <laughs> like like you know like opened you know sd card packages there was an empty package of cigarettes in there nice. like it was literally stuffed with garbage so that it would have at least enough weight to it that it would seem like there could be a webcam in there so this was either somebody back there trying to run a scam or it was somebody who returned this object and you know to to get their money back from walmart and uh you know scam walmart but the person the people in the back haven't bothered to you know go through these returns and see if they're actually because i've i used to be a receiving specialist at toys r us i know how it works the people up front take you know they'll accept anything as a return and then some guy in the back it's their job to go through and see if it's actually worth something or, or or not and so whoever's job it was there hadn't gotten to that piece yet and the woman who sold it to me you know either didn't know or just bullshitted me like oh yeah this is it's totally fine it's like no it, it's literally garbage <laughs> so so then i had to go back which is like again not part of the whole self-isolation right, thing yeah. the whole point is to not have to keep going back outside you sold I, me I, I garbage went, see literally garbage <laughs> so so yeah, so I went back and, you know, I, I they they thankfully gave me a full refund without questioning me, um, and then it gave me another chance to be out and then you know go to another, <laughs> go to another department store in search of a webcam. They didn't have those there, but they did have a Squirrel Girl action figure, <laughs> and I believe that was also the the day that the that Harley Quinn Birds of Prey hit Blu-ray. So I'm like, all right, fine, I'm grabbing both of these then. If I had to come out and risk death, I can at least get these two items. <laughs> So, so I still need another webcam for my PC. Um, uh, I sent off a Lupski update, and uh, HBO Max finally premiered, and I have already watched all ten episodes of the new Looney Tunes and all three episodes of the the Not Too Late Show with Elmo. So I'm super happy about all that. We're going to be talking about that on the Tunes podcast that we're going to be recording tomorrow. So, yeah. And then on Saturday, I'm going to be recording a special segment with a couple of other friends of mine about season five of She-Ra that'll be on not the episode coming out this Sunday, but the Sunday after that. So, so yeah. I, I watched that. I finished that. Oh, man. Isn't it? It's so good, right? That was amazing. Like, like oh. I said they stepped it up a notch during season three, and then season four was just as good. They stepped it up another notch for season five. Season five was just outstanding. I mean, it's like the perfect oh, yeah. ending to the show, too. And if you go to Noelle Stevenson's Twitter, she's been posting, like, <laughs> it's like fan art of her own show. It's like showing, like, little scenes, like, you know, post the end of season five. And it's, like, so adorable and everyone's loving it. It's, it's so great. So. <laughs> so what have you been up to this week? Um, did a little bit of work on my, my rig setup here. Uh, you'll see I'm lit better now. I, I, I have some LEDs that I use for when I film. So I there's, there's unfortunately no good place to put them. So I have one over, one over here and one over there, like up higher. Um, so you can see I'm brighter, but now I'm all kind of washed out. So I need a better webcam now, and I want to get like a one of those ring lights or whatever for in front of me, um, just so I can you know get like proper exposure and stuff rather than the crappy built-in webcam. Um, and uh, I found there's a better way to capture video from zoom to stream into in obs so i'm doing that this this month this week and uh i in the hopes that it'll cut down on the lag between the video and the audio because if you've ever gone back and watched any of the videos 
Actually, I haven't posted them, so you wouldn't have been able to do that. Never mind. Um, but the videos from Twitch, the the lip sync is literally a, like a second or two behind the sound, and it's it's really jarring and is difficult to watch. So um, it turns out that's just a problem with the way the Mac handles window rendering, and with OBS capturing the window rendering, uh, it, it introduces the lag. So now I'm doing it a different way, and I'm capturing the entire the entire window. Um, or entire display, basically. And it seems to be working better. There's still a bit of a lag, because I can see what's happening in OBS, what's ex actually getting streamed. Um, but it seems to have... It, it was a little off when you started talking, but it seems to have caught up to itself, so it looks better now. But someday we will have a professional broadcast here. Um, other than that, I've been working on the, uh, the, the video for spider Versus. Um, I, I posted a new episode of the insider yesterday where I, I talk about it and, uh, or today, actually, I guess it went out. Um, and I'm up to about halfway through Bonnie's verse. Uh, I was going to work on it last night and then I got a migraine and then that, you know, shut all of that down. Um, but, uh, it's coming out really good and, and, uh, hopefully it's just, it's just a long, tedious process. So I'm kind of working on it, a, you know, a little bit each day to see what's going on. And I do have a new idea for a song that is, you know, it's kind of timely, so I really should, you know, try to work on it soon. But I'm having a bit of writer's block with it. I just can't seem to get started. So maybe someday it'll happen. I don't know. So uh, let's get into some music. Our first song is Vegetable Bod by TV's Kyle. That's enough about an eggplant. Why are you telling me an eggplant? Cut it out. Green beans. I don't even mean to be mean, but I've never even seen beans. That ain't clout. Not even kidney beans. Not even lima beans. Not even steamy beans. Not even human beans. I've had it up to here with your cauliflower ear and your red bell pepper nose and your purple carrot pros. I've had it up to there with your big tomato stare and your pumpkin spice facade and your vegetable bod. Corn mouth. Are you serious? A corn mouth. Everything has simply gone south. What on earth? Cucumber. I wish I was unencumbered. Might as well be wilted lumber. For all it's worth. Can't build a house with him. Not with a team of men. Got pecked apart by wrens. Can't go through that again. I've had it up to here. Your cauliflower ear and your red bell pepper nose and your purple carrot pros. I've had it up to there with your big tomato stare and your pumpkin spice facade and your vegetable bod. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. I do not have time for your unearned bravado. I'm sure avocado is your El Dorado, but I think you're not an aficionado. I'm a man of means, but your lima beans are in between bad and obscene. So your bean cuisine can get quarantined or set to 2017 in your time machine. I've had it up to here with your cauliflower ear and your red bell pepper nose and your purple carrot pros. I've had it. Your big tomato stare and your pumpkin spice facade and your vegetable bod. Vegetable bod. Oh, hello, this is TV's Kyle. I'm not there right now because I totally forgot this was happening and I'm currently cooking dinner. Hey. I'm a professional. Uh but folks, this uh, song Vegetable Bod is from my uh current EP, uh Your Guide to live casino gaming cool i got it done one try this time uh uh yeah this this song's called vegetable bod it is you know from one of the uh farm uh recordings that i expanded farm if you don't know is february february album writing month and uh i was 
mainly starting by just like singing some random stuff into my phone and sometimes I was starting with titles. I don't think this one I don't think this one started with a title. Although I can tell you that uh, no no, this one did start with a title. The title that it started with was Cauliflower Ear and then after, you know, sitting down to write the song after ad-libbing something into my phone, I realized that Vegetable Bod was going to be a more apt title for the song. Um Oh, I can tell you that the inspiration for Corn Mouth was, uh, there was a while ago, like, every now and then, <sighs> there's this thing that, like, cartoonists, particularly on Twitter, like to do, where they'll just, like, pick a thing and then just, like, rail against it for a while. So this one guy was like, um, you, you know, kind of like the whole Cal Art style debate. Um, he was talking about, um, cucumber mouths, mouths that are shaped like cucumbers, where it's just like, you know kind of a long, an elongated shape with, like, some lines for the teeth, kind of like when the Simpsons smile. And, like, cartoon characters have been doing that since the 30s. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, that's what led to the corn mouth line. But I think that's that's the last of the minutia for this one, other than, you know, the very obvious that I was playing around with a bunch of the, uh, you know, the video game system-based sounds that I, that I downloaded recently. Or at least down, uh, recently as of when I started recording these. Uh, please go get uh, the new EP for free at tvscal.bandcamp.com, or if you like spending money, you can do it on iTunes. Uh, <laughs> you can listen to uh, I'm tvscal.bandcamp.com. Good, now it's official. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, other than that, please go check out uh, Mighty Magiswords, which is now on HBO Max. So, you know, in case you did not have Hulu and you just signed up for HBO Max, it's over there. Uh, and if you did... Uh, have Hulu anyway and still didn't watch it, here's another opportunity for it to stare at you and say, watch me. Um, yeah. All right, talk to you guys later. Say, Dementites and Dementoids, have you checked out the new look and new features of the recently relaunched DrDemento.com? Like our new online store with the first all-new Dr. Demento t-shirts in decades. Our best-looking t-shirts ever, if I may say so myself. And something that every demented record collector needs, our first-ever Dr. Demento turntable slip map to spin all of your favorite vinyl discs in style. There are signed photos and autographed copies of my book on the blues. You'll also find rare vintage bumper stickers, keychains, big 10-inch rulers, and buttons with my picture for just $1 each. You can even order a personalized audio message from yours truly, directly through the new site. All this and more, including the latest news from the land of dementia, available right now at drdemento.com. The better for you to stay demented. Time for funny music news. Something, something, something. In the news, uh, Luke Ski used a puppet to talk along with Kyle. Unfortunately, nobody could see it on Zoom. <laughs> Or on the broadcast um, for next time. Listening to Kyle's voice. Yeah, ne- next time uh, we pre-record Kyle and he doesn't send a video. We'll do that. There, I could I I could have set it up where people could see you while his voice was going, but I didn't know you were going to do that, and I couldn't do it while it was playing without screwing it up. So, all right. In the news, there's a new album out by Bazooty. Now, this is not. Con- uh, really a comedy release but he did say there were some quirky lyrics and he did send us a song a few years ago so I figured I would plug it. It's called Nail Biters Anonymous and is available at bazooty.bandcamp.com It is a five song EP available for just four dollars so if you're interested in that it's a very weird experimental type sound. It's very cool stuff. Someone... I haven't had a chance to listen to the whole thing but uh, just from the first track it's very cool. Not really funny but cool anyway. Uh, Wackiness on the Rise will be resuming their weekly episodes starting in July. June will have the two final episodes of the show's limited quarantine production, and then July 3rd is when the show resumes its full weekly production. Uh, See the official Wackiness on the Rise Facebook page for updates. The Reformed Whores have uh, released a new music video for a song called Horny, W-H-O-R-N-Y. This is available on their YouTube page at youtube.com slash reformedwhores. 
this was shot in quarantine, so it, it features a whole bunch of videos sent in by their fans. Um, all, everyone is all self-shot, and then they all cut it all together, kind of Brady Bunch style, and it looks really cool. Came out really good. Uh, this Sunday, May 31st, Lauren Mayer and her husband will be doing a concert uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific. T- uh, 10% of all proceeds will go to the St. Agnes Food Pantry in San Francisco. Uh, tickets available at laurenmayer.com. And I forgot the name. I forgot to write down the name of the show. But it's like it's uh, it's like New York to L.A. or L.A. to New York or something like that. Something something about the cities and and the the cities in the u.s and stuff like that focusing on the coasts but it should be a good show anyway and a news article sent to me by draconis a tweet by tony goldmark has gone viral uh twitter fact checked one of his tweets and he threatened to shut the whole platform de- no wait that was somebody else um <laughs> tony uh posted Took me a global pandemic and a damn quarantine, but I did it. I figured out the precise chronological order of all the MCU movies so far by scene. I'm out of my goddamn mind. You're welcome. Uh, so that tweet has been retweeted thousands of times and even has even gotten some press. Uh, if you're interested, check out Tony Goldmark on uh, Twitter. I think his handle is just Tony Goldmark, right? I do follow yeah. him, but I, I don't remember it offhand. Um so check that out. He he posts to the whole grid of scenes and stuff that's all in order. And just a reminder that the Fumfest 2019 compilation is still available. Uh, I'm guessing there's not going to be a 2020 one, which kind of makes me sad. Um, I mean, I guess we could. There's going to be you know a handful of live streamed concerts. I suppose we could put one together from that, but I don't know. We'll see. Oh, you know what I thought of today? And I'm, I'm going to mention it to you now because it's not going to happen. Um, we could do like a, the What the Fump game show on Zoom and make it instead of like um, instead of Jeopardy and uh, Pyramid, we could do Hollywood Squares and just have everybody on Zoom in the. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but wait, but when we that would need for that to work we need to have to make sure that all nine people are where they appear. yeah exactly that's why i said it's not going to happen there's a whole bunch of logistical stuff that would need to be figured out and i'm going to give it some thought but odds are it's, it's i'm not going to be able to figure out a way to make it work <laughs> but i thought it was a funny idea so all right you got anything before tour dates yeah um uh i can't remember if this got mentioned on the show before but i'll mention it now anyway uh, our friend Grant Pachoco of throwing toasters and, and various other cool things. Uh, he has a well-known, uh, he's got a TikTok famous puppet named Toily T. Paper. And uh, to- he, is, uh, he and Toily have managed to get uh, something happening, a fundraiser to get um, puppets made of Toily. So if, you pre- if enough people pre-order this puppet, uh, this plush puppet doll of Toily the toilet paper roll, um, then it'll happen. So if you go to uh, make ship that's make as in making things and ship as in a boat on the water make ship.com uh, and I'm assuming if you just go there and do a search for toily t-o-i-l-e-y uh, you'll find the campaign um, and right now uh, they are they don't have a, a, a money amount here they have a, a, a number of how many sold so their goal is to sell 400 and so far they have sold 247 with 14 days and 22 hours left so if you would like your own toily plush puppet, go to uh, go to makeship.com slash product slash toily. That's another way to find it. So there's that. Um, uh, you talked about the Logan Award nomination page being open, right? We did. I forgot that should probably still be on the news since it's still open. Yeah, because last week it, it technically wasn't open yet when it got mentioned, so... So, yeah. so yes, nominate um, your favorite song for the Logan Awards. Any song that was released during the calendar year of 2019 is uh, uh, qualifies. Uh, just go to loganawards.com and click on nominations at the top of the page. Something that should be pointed out, though, is when you say nominate your favorite song, it's actually nominate your favorite five songs, because in order to nominate anything this year, you have to submit a total of five. Not No more, no less. You have to pick five <laughs> songs and or music videos. Five shall be the number of the submissions, and the number of the submissions shall be five. So, you know, some of you in the past might have just been like, oh, I'm going to rattle off and 
request this or suggest this one thing and then go away. Uh, it's like, no, you actually have to put some thought into it and pick a total of five. So uh, if only there was some place that had, you know, the whole year's worth of comedy music organized on six easy volumes. Oh, wait. Um, <laughs> so there's that. Um, oh, and uh, what, what's the what's the date on it? The um, you, you probably just said it already. <laughs> The date uh, that nominations close, I don't know offhand. It was July something, I think. Um, July? I thought it was June. You know what? We get probably on LoganAwards.com. I can check. I can check, too. It is July. Uh, no, June 26, 2020. June 26. Okay, okay yeah. All right. So June I, say, I, figured, I thought they were open for about a month. Yeah. So, which is how much time you got. So, uh, yeah. Um, of course, the official announcement that Fump Fest was postponed. Um and uh, what else could I talk about? Uh, Kyle already mentioned it, but uh, we awoke yesterday to a wonderful surprise that HBO Max has Mighty Magiswords as one of its shows in the Cartoon Network collection. Uh, there's 17 franchises in the collection on the little side tab. There's two others that for some reason didn't get included um, for a total of 19, but out of the entire history of, of Cartoon Network dating back to 1992, out of all those they could have picked, uh, Mighty Magiswords made the cut, so that made all of us really happy. So, go watch Mighty Magiswords on HBO Max, so that their algorithms can see people are watching it, and maybe that'll lead to things. Yeah, that I saw that. That was awesome. Now, I, if I could just figure out the difference between HBO Go, HBO Now, and HBO Max, maybe I'd do That's, something. Yeah, basically, they, I kept trying to download to see if there was an HBO Max app on PS4, like after midnight when it was supposed to have been available and there was nothing there. And every time I watched the logo and clicked on it, it would take me to the, uh, to the HBO now app. And I'm like, no, that's not the thing I want. And then I gave up and went to bed. And by the time I got up the next morning, they had the proper app up and it's like, Oh, good. So, so yeah. Um, and then I also want to mention, um, go to, go to the, go to the aforementioned, uh, Twitter page of Tony Goldmark and scroll back a few days to find this, uh, because uh, somebody did, um, the same person who did it the last time has done it again. Best of Escape from Vault Disney so far, part two. Little animations based on audio from Escape from Vault Disney. And it's lots of fun. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to look up the number of views on Dr. Fauci while you read the tour dates. All right. Tour dates. Uh, every Wednesday online, Mark Gunn. Every Thursday online, Steve Goody. Um, Psycho Stick as well. Every, okay. every Thursday. Okay. And every Friday on YouTube, Escape from the Secret Lab featuring Dr. Pinkerton. And every Friday on YouTube, Carla Ulbrich. Uh, on the 29th online on YouTube, that would be Carla Ulbrich. I don't know if that's the same one or just a different one. Um, and the weekend of the 29th through 31st in Charlotte, North Carolina, Mikey Mason. And on the 5th in Oakland, California, Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction. That's all I got. All right, so Dr. Fauci is up to 196,000 views and climbing, slowly creeping its way towards 200,000. So Cool. Woo. So go to uh, the YouTube page of the Fun Music Project, The Fup, to see that and to share it. Dang it. All right. Uh, so that's it for the news and tour dates and all of that. Let's get into Lauren's song. Here is Goys by Lauren Mayer. Hey, Goy. What you say, Goy? Friends want to fix you with a shiksa? Are you cool, Goy? We're going to shul, Goy? If we merge, Goy, I'll go to church, Goy. I dated nice Jewish guys, but I realized I'd rather connect with guys who genuflect. That shtick gives me the hots, and if a Goy speaks Latin, oy, I plots! Hanukkah won't hurt you. A Seder won't convert you. But after we flirt you... Just might learn Yiddish. Ain't say dry. Oi, goys. 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 Make a girl start cavalling. Ain't say dry. Oi, goys. 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 Make a girl start cavalling. I like funny goys, old money goys, European goys, water skiing goys, hot goys on the squash court, or wasp goys on a golf course. I like a Muslim man or a Buddhist vegan, an Ivy League fan of Ronald Reagan. Hep goys to the prep goys, 12-step goys, I say yep goys. 
Don't be a schlamazel, cause I'm menopausal, and I've got a schnozzel. But could you love a Jew? Alephet, Gimel, Oi, Goys! 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 Make a girl start cavalling. Don't play safe, yeah! Goys! 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 Make a girl start cavalling. I'll eat trafe, yeah! Sugar. Watch me plots, oi, goys! 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 And a waspy tuchus gives me the hots, oi! Goys! 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 Make a girl my sugar. Watch me plots, oi! Goys! 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 For a waspy tuchus, I've got the hots, oi! Goys! All right, I'm here with Lauren Mayer. How you doing, Lauren? I'm great. Great to see you, Devo. You too. So tell us about Goys, the the song, not the Goys, but or oh, both. Oh, no, I can tell you about Goys in real life or this song. <laughs> um, I was my song ideas come from strange places. Right before the shutdown, I was music directing a country club amateur night show, and when they told me they wanted to do a Lizzo tune, I thought they were nuts. They ended up picking Good as Hell, um, which is a different one. And it was surprisingly good. And I realized Lizzo music isn't off limits to nerdy white folks. <laughs> but I thought, what could I do that's more appropriate to my life? And I made some comment about moving to San Francisco to meet straight men and marrying two Catholics and then not simultaneously. And I realized, you know, both of my husbands were goys and that's where it came from. <laughs> Well, that works. Now, now for the, the Gentiles in the audience, what is a goy? A goy is a non-Jew, um, which is, you know, basically most of the world. But to a Jew, a goy is somebody who is not a member of their faith. The term for a non-Jewish girl is a shiksa. Goy kind of applies to everybody, not just men. Um, because the, the, the sort of the typical nice Jewish boy dating a shiksa and there's songs about that. There's a Shix goddess song, and it's sort of this, for women to date non-Jewish men isn't as trendy a thing, I guess. So <laughs> anyway, that's the term goys. And I did throw a lot of Yiddish in the song, but... You did, um, which I appreciate. I've, 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 I've mentioned this before, but I love Jewish humor. I don't know why. And, but I, I appreciate all the, the, the Yiddish that you threw in there. Well, in the video for it, which is on my YouTube channel, I do have a glossary at the end. Oh, that's um, helpful. So that's helpful. And Yiddish, Yiddish is so helpful. Well, this is a good time for Jewish humor because the whole essence of Jewish humor is laughing in the face of disaster because, you know, through history, Jews have kind of had a few rough moments. And so we, we learned to laugh at it. And so that's kind of that tradition of Jewish humor, which I think is fun anyway, but particularly these days, if you can't laugh at it. So. Somebody posted, oh, I wish I had saved it. Um, on, I think it was on Facebook. It said that if if what was if what's happening now happened to the Israelites two thousand four thousand years ago, whatever, we'd all be celebrating Karunanika or something like that. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> and they went through yeah. the whole thing, like you know, it's tradition to cover your face, you know, and and order lots of toilet paper and stuff like that. It was it yeah, was the really traditions funny. <laughs> honoring the toilet paper that was only supposed to last one week and lasted eight. <laughs> <laughs> All the miracles. Like somebody said, okay, we've got a plague. What's next? Locusts. And now, of course, there's the... Um, we've had locusts. We had locusts uh, yeah. months ago in Africa, I think it was. Well, but now the, there's the, the... Every 17 years, the, the cicadas, cicadas. Cicadas, yeah. Um, you say cicadas, and I say <laughs> cicadas. Those, um, those are coming out now. So... Yep. You know, when people are getting what they call mask dermatitis, so we kind of got boils. I'm thinking of the ten plagues. So, I, I yeah, there were there, there was a locust. Is no, it wasn't Africa. It was the Middle East somewhere. It might have been yeah. Pakistan. Um, but yeah, the millions upon millions of locusts just going crazy, devouring the fields. And um, then there's 
there's a drought in California, like, but there's always a drought in California. Yeah, <laughs> our, our seasons are earthquake, fire, drought, and smog. Yep. And um, th- those are the four seasons in California. And smog is much better, by the way, with everybody not driving. So that's been yes. a bright spot. So, And then, of course, uh, Chernobyl is on fire. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Nuclear war uh, disaster. Okay. Yeah, bring it on. <laughs> yeah, this has been an interesting year, I must say. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And especially, you know, I mean, it's hard for anybody in the arts, but those of us who might call living doing this, it's like, um, okay, how am I going to reinvent myself yet again? Fortunately, I'm used to it. I've been doing it so much. So at least, you know, I'm starting to do some Zoom parties and, um, and you know, I'm seeing things and doing whatever I can, um, you know, we, we've got to keep reinventing ourselves. We had to reinvent ourselves when the internet came in. Those, those of you listeners who don't remember life, there was life before the internet. Um, some of us Fumpsters are old enough to remember. Um, I remember real, real life tape. before the internet. Yeah. So, yeah, just have to keep reinventing. My kids are rewatching The Simpsons and we're, we're doing a season two episodes. And oh, my God. <laughs> there was an episode. My kids. There was an episode about the Simpsons getting cable, specifically stealing cable. And I turned to my wife and I'm like, the Simpsons is old enough that it predates cable. <laughs> if you if you want a good one with your kids, have them watch the movie In and Out with Kevin Klein. Okay. I've seen that one. He plays the drama teacher, he gets outed by his student who brings his supermodel girlfriend to the small town who gets stuck in a hotel room with a rotary phone and doesn't know how to dial it. <laughs> She's like trying to press the buttons on the the, the rotary dial. <laughs> yes, kids, back in the day, I I, I have a former stepdaughter from my first marriage, and we were watching The Wizard of Oz once when she was a teenager, and I explained to her I didn't know the movie was in color, because when I was a kid, it, we had a black and white TV, and by the time we had a color TV, I wasn't home the one night a year it was on. And I did not find out it was in color till college when they used to show a kid's movie during finals week in one of the, just the dormitory film societies. And of course, when she steps out into Oz and it's all in color, I thought I had a contact high. Because, <laughs> you know, that's what people would do during finals. They'd light up, you know, this is before it was legal, kids. And so I thought I was hallucinating the colors and somebody had to explain. And so I'm explaining this to my stepdaughter. She's going, well... Why didn't you just, you know, d- um, DVR it? Well, no, we didn't have that. Well, why didn't you just rent it? No, there weren't VCRs. You had a black and white TV. So, yeah, trying to explain that stuff to the kids. Yeah, I've 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 had those conversations with my kids. What's I had to explain the thing them. That your kids give you the hardest time about. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, I, I remember I had the hardest time explaining like over the air television to them because when we when we first sat down to watch UHF, which my kids love, they love that, mo- well, that movie. That's hilarious. Um, but I had I, I wanted to explain them what UHF was, right? You know, and you know how it worked and stuff. And I tried to explain it to them, and I don't think they got it. <laughs> no, that whole concept, and especially like you know, there were three networks. Yeah. And at one point, other than the few UHF channels, sometimes you only had three channels plus maybe PBS or whatever the local, you know, cable access one was. I know. I mean, it's, it's, and it'll be funny to see what your kids reminisce about because your kids are teenagers, right? Yeah, basically. Mine are in their 20s and they'll talk about their younger cousins or kids that they know. Oh my God, these youngsters, they don't remember the big video game consoles or flip phones. You know, <laughs> it's like the struggle of using a flip yes, phone. I mean, no, oh my kids god! Kids don't know, and you know, I mean, they're they're pretty funny. The stuff that they I had to push the five about. three times to hit hit an F or whatever. Yeah, exactly. They remember learning to text on dial. You know, the the the, the phone keypad. It's pretty funny. Oy. Uh So, are you still doing uh, two songs a week? I am back down to one only okay. because I got to earn a living and I have to keep, you know, I, I'm saying yes to every free thing that gets offered is in the hopes that it might turn into some paid work, mm-hmm. which has um, led to some pretty interesting gigs. I did one for a world peace woo woo thing where they wanted a comedy song in the middle of all these, you know, world musicians and peace praying woo woo people 
Um, and I followed a preacher praying to Mother Goddess to open her thighs and welcome us into the womb of your peace. <laughs> and then in the subsequent prayers, mention specific body parts. Oh, that's, that's yes. my, see, never. my church was never that much fun growing up. No, this wasn't, this was like, a, it's like, I did that. Obviously, that was not my target demographic, so right. they didn't buy any music from me. So anyway, that's a long-winded way of saying I'm back down to one song a week just so I can spend some time working um, and trying to, you know, get more online coaching students. I'm starting to coach people for videos and host some, you know, like MC people Zoom parties and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, and then I'm going to do one streaming concert every other week because they take so much time. Yeah. So I'm doing one this Sunday if I can plug it. I don't know when. when oh, will this... please feel free. Yeah. So this Sunday I'm doing a cabaret show with my very cute second husband um, who's a wonderful singer. And this one is not political. It's just coast to coast songs about New York and California um, with a little extra treat, you know, a little love thrown to New York because they're starting to recover. So that'll be um, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific, and tickets are on my website. That'll, that's a pay-per-view, but that's flexible, and if people really don't have anything, they can email me, and we'll work something out. And I will be putting out a song this week about Jose Andres and the World Central Kitchen, which is doing food relief, and he's really funny. So all right, so that's what I have that's to great. plug. And if anybody needs an MC for your Zoom party or a custom song, um, or 10 or whatever. Uh, it's all on my website. I have updated my website to show it's laurenmayer.com and all my stuff is there now. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. And, and thank uh, you for letting me shamelessly plug everything. <laughs> good luck with the thing you're doing tonight instead of joining us live. This is some virtual thing. I don't even know. If somebody invited me to it. Um, I think there might be a I, there. This one, there is some pay. It just depends on how much they make. But yeah. um, actually, I got invited to this by Carla Ulbricht, who. Oh, um, okay. So I'll blame Carla. Carla and I are now writing together, and we're going to eventually do a video together. So see, the Fump has created a, a new writing duo. We've created a monster. I love it. Carla and I are not a monster. <laughs> we are a two-woman mutual support writing team. Women of a certain age sharing tips on how to look good on Zoom. <laughs> we did, we wrote a song together called Who's Doing Your Roots, I Wonder, to the right. tune of Whose Bed Have Your Boots Been Under. Um, I don't think she's recorded it, but she's performed it and I did a video. We're going to do one together because anyway, we spent a whole writing session just talking about our hair. We realized we needed to write a song. So anyway. All right. It's Carla's fault. I can't be here live, but um, but I'm grateful for the gig. So, and I'm grateful to see you. And I'm yeah, sorry I'm missing Luke and Ian and whoever else is going to be on. But tell them I said hi. Will do. All right. Talk to you later. Thank you. Making the internet absolutely ridiculous. Dementia Radio. www.dementiaradio.org. Port 8027. Please hang up and try again. This is the part where there's feedback. 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 You know that segment of the show we do about now? Feedback. Feedback. <laughs> feedback. <laughs>uh no feedback this week okay uh luke Le lauren says hi <laughs> <laughs> i something in that interview maybe reminded me of um there's a thing that you know people who are who are get into comedy at a young age and start learning about it as they get older it, it like <laughs> people who are grew up in like you know these kind of you know square edge you know waspy christiany parts of the world and then start learning about comedy and then discover you know jewish comedy and it's like trying to figure out what it is and why all the people are laughing so hard <laughs> which is not to say any of it's bad it's more like just a weird curiosity it's like i don't understand any of these words but everyone's laughing really hard and i desperately want to understand why <laughs> um like King of the Hill did a really good job with that with Bobby Hill. Like he discovers it and he starts going around doing this catchphrase. What are you talking about? Oh, I remember that episode. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that was one of the best, you know, ways of, 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 of demonstrating that phenomenon in pop culture. And, uh, even as an adult, I would, when I got the, uh, 
the Alan Sherman box set and, and finally listened to a bunch of his albums like from early in his career that I hadn't heard yet. And just just hearing how hard the people are laughing yeah. at this stuff because like nobody had done anything like that before. And it's like, wow, it, it's it's like it's intoxicating to think about how intoxicating that power was <laughs> <laughs> for him back then. You know, just like, you know, I want to wield such power anyway. So <laughs> can we tease anything this week? Teasing. He's a teasing kind of guy. Now you have a job. Yeah. Yes, we can. Um, teasing. Tomorrow's song is by Undercover Fun Time. Hmm. Remember those guys? They have posted one song before and another blast in the past. Tuesday's song is by Bad Beth and Beyond. Ooh. And uh, tomorrow's Spotify playlist topic is songs about songs. So we're getting meta starting tomorrow. All right. Uh, TV's Kyle is at tvskyle.bandcamp.com. Uh, Lauren Mayer is at laurenmayer.com. And uh, Mighty Magiswords is now on HBO Mega or whatever the hell. Woo! <laughs> I don't know one of the one of the seventeen HBO services. It's on one of them. Yeah. All right, you got anything else? Nope. All right. Thank you for listening to the Funny Music Podcast. I'm Devo Spice. I'm Luke And Kyle forgot about us. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Thank you for listening to the Funny Music Podcast. You can listen live every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, at DementiaRadio.org, and join us in the chat. Or subscribe to the podcast feed. Look us up on iTunes and be sure to leave us a review. Feedback for the show can be sent to info at thefunk.com. The Funny Music Podcast is a production of Fidem Interactive, LLC. Released under a Creative Commons share-alike license. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Shout it to random people on the street. And be sure to visit thefunk.com for the latest funny songs. Tune in next week where you'll hear Luke Ski say... I love you, hat! <laughs> <laughs>